Good morning and welcome back to today's post-apocalyptic world 3D printing series. So today we're going to start a brand new project. We're going to start building these terracotta warriors that you see behind me. And you might be asking, well, why are we starting a brand new project? The dinosaur isn't finished yet. Well, the first reason is that the 3D printers we've been using are currently sitting idle because all the parts have been printed for the dinosaur and now we're covering them and painting them. And I'd like to keep those moving. And the second main reason why we're starting a brand new project is that I'd like to get a little bit deeper into the details of the step-by-step -step of how we produce your own creation using 3D printers and other innovative ideas. So I'm gonna go a little bit slower. It's gonna be more like a step-by-step -step how to do your own. And so I'm very excited about that. And I've been reading all of your comments and sometimes I'm not sure if I'm going too fast or if I'm omitting some important information that may not be known to everybody. So we're gonna begin right now, starting with where do you get the file or the information you're gonna to need to build with your 3D printers? And we're gonna start with Thingiverse. Okay, here we are in the computer room. And so we opened up our browser and went to thingiverse.com. And this is a nice resource for downloading fun gadgets that you can make yourself or alter. And they're free. And we're going to type in our project, Terracotta Warrior. And let's see, maybe no space. So we've got a bunch that comes up. I kind of know where we're going. So there's one that says Terracotta Army Collection. And in this one, you can make a little horsey, crouching warrior, standing warrior. But most of them are low resolution, like this one. And But there is one that seems to be higher resolution, the general. And that's going to be our subject. Nice. So that'd be great. We're, it's, right now it's a, just a small figurine, but we're going to try to make it a full-size six-foot statue. So let's go ahead and download it to our favorite spot. And let's, let's find that folder. I'm going to extract it. I'm going to extract it here, bring this folder over. So here we're going to go in the files that we just downloaded. So it's going to have your images and your files. And the one we're looking for is the general figurine. So we're going to open that up in the with a program called Autodesk Fusion 360, which is a free CAD program which allows you to edit and create like SolidWorks types of projects. Thank you, Kitty. So let's see if we can go ahead and open that up. Computer. Mm. 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 So a big part of a project like this is organizing files, knowing where they go, and being organization is key because we're going to work with a lot of files. Oh, look at this. So this is our soldier. And the first thing we want to do is make it the size that it needs to be. So first we're going to measure using the measuring tool from bottom to top and see what it currently is. And if we zoom in, 1.5 meters about, let's get that in inches. So it's about 60 inches currently, which is about 5 feet. So we're going to have to scale it up. And we did measure it earlier, and it was about 74, 75 inches. So we're going to go to, so we're working with mesh. So we want to click on this mesh tab. And we're going to go to scale. And using a calculator, we're going to divide 60 inches into 75 inches. 
and we get a conversion factor of 1.23 about. And so let's see if we can do this scale factor here. We went to, and then we're going to put 1.23. And now if we measure it again from bottom to top, we get about 74, 73 inches, which is fine. So let me know in the comments if I'm going too fast, but this is really f what I do from the very beginning to get uh, a project like this going. Always with my supervisor present. So our next step is to, so we're gonna save this, save early, saved often. And in this case, we can see that the program that's free only allows us to use to, to save like 10 or so projects and I've used them all up for the dinosaur so what I'll do is go back and make some previous projects read only status this way my terracotta is now editable so that's how with the free program, as long as you don't have too many files open, you can use it. So we've got our statue to scale. So now we're going to start chopping it up so we can print it. And for this, I'm going to create a offset plane. And we're going to start from the feet and go up from there. And what that does is now in construction we have a plane. We can start moving it, moving it down. So you see we've moved that down to the feet. And so we're going to start chopping it up. And the key to that is to be efficient and to chop up our statue in optimal sizes for our 3D printers. So in our case, we know that our 3D printer space is about 220 centimeters across and 250 in height. So we're going to start with the height and make that about, see how it's going up there? We could go 250, but that'd be kind of close and we don't want to get stuck. So I usually go about 230, 235 in my initial cut. We want to make sure we're nice and parallel. So now we've got our plane that we moved up. And we're going to cut, make a cut. So we go to the sheet metal tools, plane cut, select the body, select the cut plane. And here, we're not going to trim it. We're going to split the body because we want to keep both sides. And then we're going to want to, where it cuts, we want it to fill. And there we go. Making a cut. Our first cut. So we see it's nice and straight, nice and flat. And now we end up with two mesh bodies. So if we erase the top one, now we can just work with the, with the feet. So let's double check our height. Remember, measure twice, cut once. And so from the foot to the base, although, yep, that's about 226 or so, which is fine for our height. Okay, I hope I'm not going too fast. Please put in the comments below if you feel I'm missing some things or if you'd like more information. But now we're going to take our plane and make some vertical cuts. So now for our second cut going across, two things we want to keep in mind. The fact that our printing surface is about 220 centimeters millimeters squared, but also we can see here that 
the total across is more than two prints so we're going to have we're, we're going to want to divide it into three so about here if we see it's about 500 divided by three well in any case we're going to go 155 we're going to go like this as one cut this way so this makes it a good average size going across plane and okay and once you've set your cutting parameters it repeats it afterwards so you don't have to do it each time so let's save early save often okay so now we've got this cut going this way and we're going to move our plane Oops. going this way now it kind of clicks into the perfect perpendicular and so now we're going to go this way starting at zero and again we're going to see if the total length is about 500 again so we're going to do this in three so about here should be good cut select plane enter and repeat okay also if we look here this only cut the first of of the original structure so we want to at this time cut also the middle one and cut the last one moving our plane again about halfway and we can see that we're at 186 which is fine so we're placing it and then we're going to make our cuts. One, cut, so this goes fast after a while. There are programs that will cut automatically for you. I prefer to do it this way because this way I'll know that it's customized to my printers and that there's no wasted tiny pieces to print for example and that we're going to get a nice balanced printing so when we're going to print with eight printers at the same time and it's good that we don't have like one 30 minute print and a nine hour print so it's good to make them more or less even like this so this sets up our first print and we can see here we're going to have nine structures so eight of these are going to be for the first print what we'll do now is save them and name them. So here we've got our mesh bodies. So we're going to call this just plain one, really, because we're going to make the whole statue as one. So And we're going to go eight at a time because we don't want to get too confused. The next thing I'll do is take out our little printing, printing cards. That's for later. So now we've got our eight first pieces in our CAD program. And we're going to save these pieces in the file type that our printer slicer program, which in our case we're using Ultimaker Cura, which is also a free program. And to do this, we're going to right click on one of our parts, export mesh body, press enter, and we're gonna find a file
name it one for one and we can just go in order for that so two enter it'll go here Okay, now we can leave our Fusion 360 program and enter the world of the slicer. So we've got our eight files saved in the correct format, hopefully. And now we're gonna see if we can open up our foot parts. So we just opened it up and so now we're gonna <laughs> let's see if it works. So there is a shortcut for this. After we select it, we can arrange models and it'll automatically go on our surface. So this square here represents the area of our printer to scale and looks like it placed it perfectly. And the next step is to so once we have our part nicely placed on our printer surface let's go ahead and check the parameters we use for and as requested here are the parameters I've been using for the dinosaur and that we're going to use for this project so I'm not a 3d printing expert this is what works for me and so if you click down on parameters in Ultimaker Cura, there's a section called experimental. And this is where the wireframe, wire printing feature is located. So let's go through some of these parameters, flow rate, com compensation, 100. It looks like I haven't changed anything from the defaults except the feeds and speeds, which is the the flow. So these I've got at 200 each. Nozzle clearance one and you can just look at these. I'm not sure what they all mean but they're, they are what works for me. The other main thing I change is that I use a nozzle that's 0.6 on the 3D printers. Anywho, so this is where we get to our little cards here. These are the little cards that go inside the 3D printer. And I've got them labeled one through eight. So we're gonna save it now to our little cards. We wanna switch this to file type G code and just keep whatever default name they gave us. Go back to our main screen, delete that, open up the second part, select it. Control R, and it tells us too that this is gonna be about a seven hour print, so this is good to set up for, let's say, overnight, for example, and so we're gonna export it, change the file name, verify on the screen, next. So this goes pretty fast once we get going, and this is all kind of fun, really you're creating out of nothing this this doesn't cost anything once you have the the hardware even the filament is pretty cheap I get them for about seven dot seventeen dollars for 2.2 pounds or one kilogram and number three select R so again we see that it takes up a lot of space this will take seven and a half hours And once we have our first eight little disks of files, we can take these to our 3D printers.
So we've got our first eight parts up and printing now. It's nice to hear these guys working again. And these will be printing overnight. So in the morning we'll have a brand new set of eight parts that we can now put together and begin thinking of covering even. So today we discovered Thingiverse where you can download your own files for free so that you can have a nice project to work on. And then we can scale it up to whatever size you want using Fusion 360, which is another free program. And then we use the slicer program Cura Ultimaker, which is also free. And with that, we can convert our files to something that the printers can read. So tomorrow morning will be Christmas morning. We'll have eight brand new parts to put together and continue our Terracotta Warrior. So that'll about cover it for today. And we will see you next time on Dave's Post-Apocalyptic World.